Listen, be careful of the people who are always throwing your wrongs and your shortcomings in your face. Be careful of the people who are always throwing your wrongs and your shortcomings in your face. And I'm not talking about if you're just completely toxic, you're abusive and you're dysfunctional, you're lazy and somebody's holding you accountable because there has to be accountability. But I'm talking about somebody who just throws all of your shortcomings in your face. So basically you could you could accomplish 99 things. You could accomplish 99 things and then fall short in one area. They're going to ignore the 99 things you accomplish but they won't let go of that one thing that you did. They're gonna let you hear about that one thing that you did wrong. They're not gonna let it go. They're gonna throw it in your face constantly. Everything else that you did just goes out the window. Listen, be careful of people like this. One thing I've noticed, especially in the body of Christ in relationships, all right, is the one thing, the Bible says the one thing that we should have above all things is love, correct? Love never fails. Love is not conditional. Love is supposed to be unconditional. And I'm not talking about to the point where you'll where you'll you'll tolerate abuse. All right. This is this is not what that's about, because you guys know I always talk about narcissistic abuse. I always talk about stuff like that. Do not tolerate abuse. But say, for example, you're working hard. You're not lazy. You're working hard. You're educated. You're trying to build your business. You're trying to build your platform. You're trying to be a, a, a preacher, a speaker. Maybe you're trying to start a business. Maybe you're trying to be a music artist and you work in full time. You got you got children. You got a girl. But say, for example, it's not your appointed time yet. So you don't have millions of dollars in the bank account yet. But somebody, a woman that truly supports you, she's going to be there to try to see how she can add to your life. Right. If she if you're not able to take her on a date one week and even though you just worked hard all week and you had to pay all of her bills. Now she want to go out and say, oh, he broke and he a bum. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Because somebody who truly loves you, a woman who truly loves you, and, and ladies, a man who truly loves you, all right, they're going to protect you. They're not going to expose your weaknesses or expose your shortcomings. If anything, they're going to try to bring you to restoration. Amen. They're going to they're gonna try to bring you to restoration, even if you fall short, even if you make a mistake. Say that man was just working hard all day and he's trying to, on top of that, he's trying to start his business. Maybe he going to school and working full time and he got you and the kids. That man got so much on his plate, but when he come home from work, he got a nagging woman. He got a nagging wife because maybe he forgot to start the laundry. Maybe he forgot to do the dishes. That man got so much on his plate. He working all day to try to take care of you and build a legacy for his family. You got something to nag about? Even if he does fall short in one area, even if he does make a mistake, why sit there and nag him? If anything, you should be seeing it from the perspective of, man, he's got a lot on his plate. Right. It'd, it'd be a lot for a man to handle this anyways. He's going from the time he wakes up to the time he goes to sleep. He's going, going, going. What can I do as a woman to make that man's life easier? What can I do to pick up? I don't even want to say pick up the slack because it might not even be slack, but to to pick up where he's not able to because he's busy doing other things. What can I do as a woman, babe? What can I do for you to make your life easier? What can I do to take some of that pressure and that weight off of your shoulders so that everything can flow smoothly so that we can work together as a team? You got this and, and, you know, where you might fall short, I'll pick up and where I, where, where I fall short, I'll pick up. Y'all get what I'm saying? But see, you have people that are so prideful and it's like both parties should be given 100, 100. Absolutely. But it's like some days it might be 60, 60, 40. Some days it might be 30, 70. Some days it might be 50, 50. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that, that you should allow somebody to do more than you. Or you shouldn't um, match the same kind of love. I'm not saying that you should do less for somebody if they're doing going above and beyond for you. Y'all both should go above and beyond for each other. But what I'm saying is there might be some days where she's having a bad day. And fellas, you can pick her up. Make her stronger. You know what I'm saying? Pick up where she's not able to because she's having a bad day. Maybe that man is having a bad day. He got all this weight on his shoulders. He's stressed out. He's battling his mind. Ladies, be his peace and be his love. See, see how you can talk to him and communicate him and bring him back to restoration when he comes home from a long day, even if he fell short. OK, he fell short. Now, see how you can bring that man back to restoration. Don't just pick at him. Don't destroy him. And then you going around to your friends saying that he's lacking in this and he's lacking in that. Now you're trying to bring your family and your friends into this situation and you're destroying that man's character. Again, it's one thing if a man is lazy and abusive, but that's not what I'm talking about in this very circumstance. That's not what this video is about. Amen. 
Listen, Proverbs 17 verses 9 says, he who covers an offense promotes love, but he who repeats a matter separates best friends. So what is this saying? He who covers an offense, maybe he did something wrong. And again, I'm not talking about cheating, putting his hands on you. I'm not talking about none of that. All right. But making mistakes, you guys should be able to discern the difference. All right. I shouldn't have to say it, but he who covers an offense promotes love. If my best friend falls short or if my woman falls short, I'm going to be there to protect her and lift her back up. I'm not going to go to everybody and expose her. Listen, we have a time and an era where if you make a mistake in a relationship, your partner wants to expose you and talk bad about you to everybody. and They want to destroy your character. Now, everybody got this bad image of you. Even in the body of Christ, what's happened? All these ministers exposing each other. This is this competitive and this prideful spirit, even within the congregation. Church people. You go to church and this person gossiping about that person. Somebody fell short. Maybe somebody got drunk. Maybe somebody did something. And then you want to go expose and air them out to the entire church. And you want to kick them out of the church. No. What does the Bible say? Galatians 6 verses 1. Brothers and sisters, if someone sins, you, are, you who are spiritual should restore them gently. And I understand how the Bible also says, but be careful so that you do not fall into sin. Now, if that person doesn't want to change. And that person is abusive. That person is drinking, getting high, fornicating. And that's your friend. All right. And it's beginning to tempt you. And they were, they're, they're trying to pull you into that same toxicity. They're trying to pull you into that same lifestyle. That's when you set the boundary. Absolutely. But I'm trying to make a point here. We have a, um, such a religious mindset now that feels like if somebody does something wrong in the church, even if one of your church leaders falls short, Maybe he went and fornicated with somebody. Maybe she went out and got drunk. You want to air her dirty laundry and expose her to the entire church. And you want to kick that person while they're down. I don't care what nobody says. It's not right. It's not right. It's not right in relationships with a man and a woman. And it's not right in church. Now, if you have a pastor or a leader who's blatantly doing witchcraft on you or they're operating in divination, they're manipulating, they're, they're, they're married and they're having sex with all these different people. Okay, I understand why that person might get exposed. But listen, we have to create a culture of honor, a culture of revival and restoration. So true love, the love of God, the love of Jesus Christ, I don't care what anybody says, is gonna wanna restore that person. Yeah, they went out and fornicated. Yeah, they fell short, they got high, they got drunk. OK, so why don't you pray and intercede for them and see how you can love on them and help them to identify, ask the right questions, not not asking questions as in interrogating them, but ask the right questions. Why are you why are you feeling like this? Why did you do this? What's causing you to be this way? Love on that person, pray for them and see how you can help bring that person back to restoration because if not, if we just condemn people when they fall short of the glory and we want to break up with them or when we condemn people, if they fall short of the glory, and we want to kick them out of the church, whether it's in a platonic relationship, in a church setting or in a in an intimate relationship between a man and a woman. We immediately want to condemn them. We want to leave them and we just want to get rid of the whole person. And then what? Not only do people get rid of the whole person, but then what happens? They go and they start talking down about that person. Stop kicking people while they're down. Women and men, be there for your spouse, be there for your lover. If they're going through a hard time, that is through sickness and through health. That is when you come in and you help to identify what the issue is and you pray, you intercede and you bring them back to restoration. If they fall short of the glory, they make a mistake. Your job is to protect them, not expose them. That's what's wrong with church people. Everybody wants to expose everybody. No. At my ministry, the people I know, the people we, we, we love each other, right? If somebody falls short, we're going to protect them and we're going to intercede for them. And we're going to bring them back to restoration. We're not going to kick them to the curb and expose them to everybody. Stop kicking people while they're down. Amen. Start having the love of God within your heart. Stop condemning people in your minds and damning them to hell because you were once that person that fell short. You were once that person that might have fell, uh, fell back into sin. You might have backslid. But guess what? It's easier for you to point fingers to somebody whose dirty laundry got exposed. Maybe maybe what you did wrong is in the dark. Maybe what you did wrong didn't get exposed to everybody else, but God sees it. Don't sit there and act like you never did anything wrong. Don't sit there and act like even Christians 
majority, I'd say 99% of Christians, even after they get saved, we backslide a few times before we're, before we're able to, um, before we really have enough strength and stamina to fight against that temptation. I fell back. When I first got saved, I was still getting drunk. I was still getting high. I was still fornicating. But you got to think about the lifestyle I came out of. Where I'm at today, where I'm at today, I'm sober, abstinent, not having sex, no porn, no, no masturbation, all of that. The fact that I'm even alive today is a miracle. Pray and intercede for people and see how you can bring them back to restoration. And please, to all my Christians following me and watching this video right now, do not be so quick to condemn people. Those are still God's people. And if you think about it logically, I'm not even going to say logically because God is beyond logic. But ask yourself this. Would Jesus Christ want them to go to hell or would he want to bring that person back to restoration? Otherwise, what was the blood of Jesus for? This is creating a culture of honor, creating a safe place where people can open up to you. They feel safe coming to you and being like, hey, I messed up. And they can admit to you all of their wrongs. They can admit to you what's hidden in the dark. And they know that you're not going to go, oh, did you hear so-and-so just told me that he, so-and-so just told me that she just did this, 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 and that. Oh my, can you believe that? It's foolish. And that's actually a form of witchcraft. He who covers an offense promotes love. But he who repeats a matter separates best friends. So you notice when you continue throwing something in somebody's face or you expose them and you talk down about them and you kick the man while he's down, that's going to ruin relationships. It ruins the person. It brings division and separation. Focus on restoring, healing, creating a culture of revival, bringing people back to life. Focus on protecting people in this season, season even through their downfalls. Amen. And if you don't do this and you're the type of person that gossips and just condemns and wants to expose people, you need to check your own heart posture and ask God to perfect his love within you this season. I love y'all and God bless.